Pastor Barney, I am just so thrilled to just have this opportunity to sit down with you and talk through one and a half years mm. of just an amazing experience of you being away uh, okay. from Harare, Zimbabwe. Uh, what started off as just a trip that was going to last just maybe a few months <laughs> has turned into one and a half yeah. years. Uh, but before we get into the details of that, and I'm so looking forward to just hearing that, um, this year is a significant year for right. you. And uh, during Action, we had the opportunity to celebrate your 40 years mm -hmm. of ministry out of here, Harare, Zimbabwe, to the world. And you know what really blessed me was just listening to the amount, uh, the countless testimonies, stories that came through uh, from people who, you know, people would never have imagined just how your life has impacted wow. so many different people. And, and maybe just to start off, Pastor Bonnie, uh, when you stepped onto Zimbabwe and so I think back in those days, Rhodesia, right. did you ever imagine that your life would have such a tremendous impact uh, that it has had over these past 40 years? No, no. My focus was just to serve God and to follow yeah. my husband over here. I never wanted to be in Africa. I never even thought about Africa, actually. Yeah. But I was amazed when I saw Ron Canoli yeah. and Janice's parents and then all of the history yep. that we had. Amazing. I, I was even shocked. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Yeah, well, it's been amazing. You no, know, Pastor Bonnie, your life is not just, you know, a lot of us, we see the musical side and that is so powerful. But you've been involved in education, you've been involved in health, you've been involved in so many different <laughs> spheres and right. just brought such tremendous impact. And, you know, it's just amazing that to think you've been doing this for 40 years mm. consistently. I started when I was two. It's just, yeah, no, it's amazing, Pastor Bonnie. <laughs> I can't believe it either. And I, you guys did a great job of capturing all that. I mean, I was in shock. I was at Ben Farrell's house yes. with my son Jonathan and Sarah. I was, I, I didn't expect that. I yeah. truly did not expect it. So I want to thank all of you who were part of this. Thank you so Amazing. much for what you captured. I am blessed. Amen. You know, Pastor Barney, let's, let's get into the one and a half years. How did you end up staying in America oh. for that long? Well, initially we just went for a family vacation. Yeah. And, um, but due to some previous health procedure of yeah. bone neurofeedback, feedback, we all participated in that. And in January, uh, just before we were about to come back, the lady who was head of this thing mm -hmm. said to my husband, Pastor Tom, your wife, I think I'd love to treat her for free. Oh, wow. Now, that was a great blessing because wow. it was quite expensive and we wouldn't have done it had yeah. that had been the case. So he, she said, because I can see she's been through a lot of stress. Okay. You know, living in Zimbabwe is very stressful. <laughs> I know. So I, I, I can see and I'd really like to take some time with her and I think we can have a great... A great opportunity. My okay. husband says, eh, let's do it. So Pastor Tom says, stay for a couple of weeks. I'll come back um, next month and, you know, yeah. I'll bring you home. And then at the same time, we've been going to a chiropractor. Now, I've had so many whiplashes in this yes, uh, yes. in this life yeah. <laughs> that my neck and my spine actually are, aren't in really good shape. So the chiropractor that we went to said, hey, I'd love to treat you and really help you, but you need to be here longer. And I said, well, actually, I'm going to be here yeah. for a few wow. weeks. So, you know, he said, great. So I had this whole protocol set in place, take care of my, you know, my, my, my brain, take care of wow. my spine. I yeah. was really excited about it. And then uh, as Tom came back and then COVID hit, yep. <laughs> but just before COVID hit, the, um, in fact, Pastor Tom left and as he left, COVID hit. Yeah. But just before that, the wife of the chiropractor was a health woman, and she said, listen, I'd like you to do some hormone testing or okay. adrenals or thyroid or something. Just, you know, while you're here, we'll sure. take some time to deal with anything. Come to find out, I was bordering on, on liver cancer. No. And she said, listen, wow. <laughs> I think there's something we can do to help you, but you definitely need to deal with this. Well, I had been on... Uh, I don't know if sure. any of you know, some of you do know that I'd been on uh, a, a cyclovir drug for three years due to shingles in shingles, my eye, yeah. keeping me from going blind, but it affected my liver really bad. And so she gave me a health protocol and, you know, at, she said about six months. So Pastor Tom says, no, you need to stay and do this. So, you know, one week turned into Two, another yeah. week, into another to a month, to a month. Yeah. And the next thing, you know, but I got on the protocol. I started doing wow. this health thing. And then Pastor Taz came over with Pastor Tom another time, because Pastor Tom came over three or four times 
as well. And one thing led to another, but it's, it's so complicated. <laughs> but God causes all things to yeah. work together for good. And yeah. that's what I want to encourage you, anybody listening, that God causes all things to work together for good. good. Yeah. And you don't know what you're into today, what may help or bless someone else tomorrow so or even affect your life tomorrow. Pastor Tom said, stay here and fi finish you know, your pro diet protocol until yeah. we know you're healthy 100%. And so Pastor Taz was dealing with a church in Dallas, Dallas yes. and um, he was going to fly back, but there was an issue with planes. I said, Pastor Taz, you cannot go back. You have to come and see this woman that I'm dealing with, right? Yes. Oh, he was not happy, but he <laughs> obeyed. <laughs> and then he came, went through uh, a testing with this woman, and the result is... Pastor Taz is half oh. the man that he was back then. And I am so proud wow. of him. He also has brought back, you know, a health protocol that um, I believe is going to be incredible for our nation, so, for our So, first of all, just to interject, you're saying you were involved in what we're seeing today with Pastor Taz. I take all wow. the blame. <laughs> <laughs> and it's remarkable, Pastor, yes. Pastor Bonnie. I mean, just talking and interacting with Pastor Taz, he's so much happier. His family is so excited right. and you can see even his confidence has just grown tremendously because I think you've always emphasized to us the aspect oh. of health. You've always emphasized Well, that. Pastor Taz and Pastor Tom went on the protocol yeah. and we have brought it back here, like I said. And Sarah, later on in the, in the year, um, she started to work for and was the receptionist and helped with the actual protocols. Okay. For this, so she's also going to be involved in doing that as well. She had also some health uh, challenges. Okay. John, we all did some health protocols with this. It's fantastic. So wow. I'm really excited about it. Wow, that's amazing. And Pastor Bonnie, you started talking about Sarah, and you also spoke a bit about Jonathan. Uh, family has always been very important right, to you, right. and you've modeled that with Pastor Tom consistently with your mm -hmm. family. You do things as family. But there were certain things that you also had to deal with with your family when you're in the United States. Yeah, it was just normal family things. Yeah. And it was just being with Sarah, being with Jonathan Michael. He came over and, praise God, we started an art studio. I mean, how did that happen? I know there's an amazing story before. with that. Well, no, it's just that every day he was seeking God, you know, yeah. what to do. And he, would, he sat in the specific <laughs> coffee shop. This coffee shop was fantastic. But it was in an old, broken-down uh, mall. Okay. And uh, these people had just started this coffee shop. So he'd sit there every day reading his Bible. He was so passionate. And then the guy came and said, hey, what are you doing here? Are you a street person? You know, we laughed oh. about that. And he said, um, no, but I, I do art. And he said, well, you know what? You need to rent a, a room upstairs because the lady who is doing this renovation of this mall now, uh -huh. this being renovated, has a room upstairs that's uh, ready to be rented. And... She used to do homes, but because of COVID, COVID. nobody wants her in the home. Sure. So she's now upstairs renovating. Why don't you check it out? They were not going to check. They were not going to do anything, but they saw him. The people were renovating yeah. and said, oh, this guy's wonderful. Wow. Rented it to him. The next thing, he's up and running. So and he's that running was good. Studio. Yes, yes. And what started off as just simply going to a coffee shop, having coffee, well, and being in on, his word. Right, and working on health issues yeah. as well. And it's then amazing. being in the word. So his perseverance in prayer and the word opened up the door for this. Yeah, I just love what you say, what you said at the start, that God causes all things right. to work together for good. And right. you can just see that in all the stories you're talking about. You know, you, you, you kind of highlighted a bit uh, about just the aspect of provision. Um, you know, you spoke about how you found favor even with the doctor that you worked with. Oh, yeah. You said we'll do it for free. But there's also been other stories of just how God was able to provide even during your stay in America? Well, I went, uh, one day Sarah called me and said, Mom, come, we're across town. My friend and I were having a walk and we want you to just come meet us. So, in, now I'm in my health protocol, right? Yes. So I'm cooking and eating and yeah. cooking and eating and cooking and eating and shopping all by myself. By yourself. <laughs> and I went over there and it was just before the lockdown. This is just the very beginning as I was coming home because it was quite far and I don't normally go that area. There was a shop that I really liked to go into in the old days, you know, and shop. Yes. And um, I hadn't done much shopping in America. And when I went in, I noticed a couple there that were trying out, this girl was trying on some clothes and the husband was just kind of meandering around. Anyway, I, they looked a little familiar, but I didn't notice them too much. Anyway, as I was le checking out and they were standing in the checkout line, they turned to me and looked and said, ah, Bonnie. Yeah. And I said, 
I <laughs> don't know, I don't know you. Who you are. And then they said who they were. They were people that started uh, in the 80s. They were one of our first speakers at a conference. Oh, wow. That it was Mark and Janet wow. Brzee. And they had a church in Tulsa. I hadn't been to it. So I went to the church that weekend, and it was the weekend that just before they shut all the churches down in America. Yes. And I ministered because the Holy Spirit moved, and they handed me a microphone, and I yeah. sang, and I prophesied. I think they played some of the prophecy um, last yes, year. Yes, yes, we saw that, yeah. So, and after that, their missions director said, I think we need to support her. And then they gave me an offering that helped me stay longer. You know, so the provision was there, the, the, the health was there, the chiropractor was yeah. there, and I had all of this, and there was no way I could turn it down. That's amazing. Yeah. Pastor Barney, even as you've been sharing all these amazing stories, there's a song that's been playing in my head oh, yeah. as you've been speaking, and it's that song you wrote, God causes all things to work together for your good. And I think that's just been the common thread in all your stories. Right, right. Yeah. There are so many stories, yeah. so many connections I made that I never would have believed was possible. So many things that happened, which I can't really share sure. all those now. But I want to leave you with one story that really impacted me the most and helped me to know that I was there in God's will. Yeah. It didn't seem like it maybe. And, you know, what's happening with COVID, which yeah. I'll address a little bit later. But this was the most impactful thing sure. to me. Now, you know that when I got born again, many people know that, that when I got born again, I got born again when I was 18. Yeah. I'd come from a very abusive home, and you know, my dad was an alcoholic yeah. and tried to beat my mom in, in front of us, and it, it was just really horrific growing up. But uh, I got born again when I was 18, mm -hmm. and the reason is because my mom remarried a juvenile judge who needed votes to stay in office, yes, right? Yes. And when election time came, my sister and I used to knock on doors and, <laughs> and uh, ask for votes, and they would, we would go to certain events. I was asked to sing at a revival. Yeah. Now, we grew up very traditional, but not born again. So I went to this revival, and I said, okay, I'll sing. I sang this revival because they wanted Jesus freak votes. You know, that, yes, that yes, was a Jesus yes, freak, Jesus freak. So I sang for this revival, and right after I was done, this beautiful woman got up, she spoke. She played the piano like I've never heard before. Yeah. She was tall. She was beautiful. She had a family. She had a, you know, just a, a small child. That, uh, she had everything anybody could want. She yeah. was Miss America from Kansas a few years earlier. And okay. I thought, wow, she's beautiful. She's the all-American woman's dream, you know. But she said, I wasn't happy. With all this, I wow. wasn't happy until I accepted Jesus Christ wow. as my Savior, wow. and He filled a void, and I became born again. And I said, I, yeah. He, my way, Jean this is, this is Miss America. If she Sandra. needs Jesus, wow. what do I need? Yeah. And I went uh, up after the service, and I prayed with her in the back of the school hall, as it was. We were in a, in a school hall. I prayed with her and got born again. She wow. was wonderful. She was so sweet. Anyway, my heart's desire has always been to reconnect with her and to tell her what happened to me since yes. she was responsible for leading me to the Lord. Yes. I, I just, wow, I just wanted to. Well, anyway, so while I was there, I also got to connect with a lot of people from mm. Zimbabwe, uh, my family, yeah. friends I had met and known forever. I, I mean, it was just fantastic yeah. in many, many ways. But my sister came and she had been to the hairdresser in Kansas mm -hmm who she was telling about me being in America all these years, all, the, all these months for, you know, seemed really crazy yeah. and uh, explained how I got born again and how she got born again as well. And then she said it was through a Miss America from Kansas. And the parents said, I know her. I stayed with her and her family wow, for a no. year and a half. I know her. So my sister got the telephone number. So I got the telephone number. Then I called her. Yeah. And within a couple of days, I was on the road with my Benjamin, who was doing filming at the time. Okay. And he and I went uh, two hours up to Missouri <laughs> to go see her and do an interview with her. And it's fantastic. And I oh, hope wow. that comes out soon wow. because it was amazing wow. to reconnect with her. Then her pastor walks in as we're doing the interview, who didn't know I was going to be there. COVID, everybody shut down. But we used the church as an interview. He came in and said, can you minister in the church on Sunday? Oh, wow. And I wasn't prepared to minister much. I went there, I was cooking and eating yes, and, and cleaning, cleaning and shopping and going to health protocols. I said, no, I said, sure, I'll come. So I went 
and uh, Jonathan and I went that Sunday, and then he said, when, when your husband comes, which he was coming yes. again, he said, let's us uh, get together and can he come and minister. Okay. So it was a real fantastic wow. time to connect with the woman who led me wow. to the Lord. Pastor. And she was 73 now, and she wow. had her, she'd lost a daughter, and she'd been divorced. Yeah. She had been through so much, and she's beautiful, a, me, a beautiful wow. spirit. And for her to see what God has done exactly. with all of you exactly. and the connection, the it just, yeah. it changed her life. She said, my life is worth it. Wow. Having been connected to this testimony. whole ministry and this whole thing. Yeah. And like her, you went on to win a pageant and you became Miss Tulsa. That is just such an amazing <laughs> story and such an amazing testimony. With all that's happened, all this just the eventful period that you've had in America. Are you happy to be back home? Oh, yes. I'm so happy yeah. to be home. <laughs> I missed everyone. Yeah. I missed Zimbabwe. I missed my husband, of course. Yeah. But it was really, and it was challenging. It was more than, I could never explain to you sure. how difficult it was, but everybody's been through challenges, yes. right? One thing, though, that concerned me was I noticed that the churches around the world mm -hmm. have become therapeutic instead therapeutic. of theological. Okay. We've missed the essence of who God really is. Wow. And people are concerned about my needs, my wants, my culture, what I <laughs> think, what music I like. And we've missed yeah. reverence, holiness, yeah. who the Lord really is in worship. Wow. So that is a concern for me. Okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm believing that we're going sure. to be able to continue to re uh reestablish how good. god sees yes, it how does he see the word how does yeah. he see us and you know that's one thing that i realized that the bible says in first john that who is it that overcomes the world yeah it's even our faith wow our faith in fact i want to read the scripture for whoever has been born of god overcomes the world and this is the victory that overcomes the world our faith yes now in this day and age, we are all challenged. We're yes. going through some, some, you know, the COVID crisis, people dying, isolation, yeah. being alone, confusion, frustration. Everybody's, you yeah. know, really up in the air with something, but we're in the end times. Biblically, God has given us what is actually happening. Pastor Tom spoke about it last week. Yep. Fantastic. Yes. However, um, we need to understand that we have something within us that can withstand what's going yeah. on. And that is our faith. We can overcome the world with our faith. But I discovered what is our faith? Mm -hmm. Faith is the evidence, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not, not seen. seen. But if you look in the Greek of mm -hmm. faith, faith actually means persuasion. Oh, wow. I'm persuaded. Oh, wow. So this is what overcomes the world, my persuasion. persuasion. And if, if faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, persuasion comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Yes. So persuasion comes, people, how can I be persuaded? By reading the, the word, word of God. on a daily basis. So I want to encourage all of you in the daily reading and connection with the yeah. word of God. Because it is the, our faith that is going to is, is going to give us the strength that we need. Sure. But it's the word in us that gives us that persuasion that yeah. makes us persuaded. And the Bible also says that you can't please God without faith. Yeah. So we can't please God without being persuaded that He is and He is the rewarder Persuaded. of those who diligently seek Him and that He will give us wisdom and insight and understanding. Yeah. So I pray for revelation for Amen. everyone Amen. because I know that in this time we cannot survive without discernment, knowledge, understanding, revelation. And not only that, but the scripture says, Isaiah 4, Four 3, three two, 2, 1, the people I form for myself, myself shall declare, declare my praise. praise. Now, you may have heard me say this before, but I love to repeat myself. Yes. And I'll repeat it again. Yes. That the people actually means congregation, troop, yeah. tribe. It's a gathering. gathering. yeah. It's a gathering. The gathering God created yeah. to praise him. That's what we were created to do was to be gathered. Wow. Well, this day and age has actually come against that. So what we need to do is know that. Yeah. And then wherever possible, continue to gather, even if it's two, one, wow. two, wherever two or more are gathered. Yes. So continue in the grouping and the, sure. and, and the, and the gathering, gathering of anybody because that is where God is glorified and to worship him in spirit Amen. and in truth. Amen. So I pray for all of you that 
that God will cause all things, and you'll see that, you'll get a revelation, a determination of yeah. faith that God will cause all things to work together because I had no idea that by staying in America, I'd end up there a year and a half. Yeah. And I had no idea that I'd end up meet the woman who led me to the Lord. Had I not have been there, that wouldn't have happened. I had no idea John would get a studio. Yeah. I had no idea that I would have the provision I had. Yeah. But I did it one day at a time, persuaded that God had Amazing. me there for a reason. So, you Amazing. know, it seemed kind of strange. And I still had plenty of health challenges. We all yeah, do. We're fearfully yeah. and wonderfully made, but we are very fragile. Yeah. And with God, all things are possible. So I do want to encourage you to stick in the word, stay together, Amen. stay plugged in to uh, the church as best as you can. And we'll see what God will do. I think it's going to be Amen. a very uh, trying time. Yeah. Never said that it would be easy, but God is with us yeah. and God causes all, all things, things to, to work, work together, together for your good. Amazing.